Today on Ham Radio Q&A, the Chameleon P-Loop 2.0. So please keep watching for more. Da -da 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 -da. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9 VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Well, today I'm with Joe, KD9 CGX, and um, we're uh, setting up the uh, Chameleon P-Loop uh, 2.0 Mag Loop Antenna. Um, it's a little bit warmer today than it was for our last... Uh, about 35 degrees warmer than the last video. Yeah, but we got about five feet of more snow than we did last time, so if it's not one thing or the other. Uh, but today, uh, we've got the Chameleon uh, P-Loop 2.0. And uh, we're going to use it today uh, for the Wisconsin QSO party, a statewide operating event. So hopefully we can make some great contacts with this uh, fascinating antenna. Uh, but first, um, Joe's going to take it away and tell us a little bit more about the antenna and how it works. And then we'll finish up with our impressions of it. So this is Chameleon's latest mag loop antenna. It's the P Loop 2.0. Uh, this is a QRP intended antenna, a maximum of 25 watts uh, sideband, 10 watts for CW or for any of your uh, full duty cycle digital modes such as RIDI or FT8. Uh, this will do 10 meters through 40 meters, actually gets down to about 6.8, uh, but anything below 6.8 megahertz is not very usable. Um, it is a mag loop style antenna, meaning this small loop is a driven element and there is magnetic coupling between this loop and the lar larger outside loop. The magnetic coupling or same thing that you would find in a uh, transformer uh, is that when you induce a current in this loop it automatically induces a current through this loop. So uh, then that's this outer part is what radiates and was what we're uh, tuning. Now, because it's magnetic coupling, it's very inductive. In order to um, equal out the uh, inductive reactants, we have a tuning capacitor down here. Um, this tuning capacitor is kind of sort of the um, thing you gotta be careful about when you're running power. Uh, if you run anything more than about 25 watts, what'll happen is you'll actually have arcing between the plates, and then this thing is uh, no good anymore. You tune it with the knob down here. I'm not gonna touch this. We've already tuned this for the frequency that we want. Um, now, the nice thing about these is that they're directional. They're very efficient. Um, and additionally, because they have a narrow pass band, they um, reject a lot of QRM and QRN. So you don't got a lot of noise coming from the outside. Um, so this is a great antenna for that. The downfalls is again, because it's that narrow pass band, um, you're gonna wanna park on a frequency and use that frequency and maybe up 10 or 15 kc on each side. If you're a person who likes to scan the band, looking for contacts, uh, what you'll have to do is you'll almost have to retune this every time you go up and down the band or use something like an SDR uh, along with your logging computer uh, that will definitely uh, help your chances of catching other stations. Um, setup is a breeze. Um, I've set this up about three or four times now. You can set it up in under five minutes. I think I've got it down to about three minutes. Another few minutes for tuning, depending on what you're using to tune it. Uh, but this is the first time actually using it. So let's go inside for the contest and see how it works. CQ, 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 Wisconsin QSO party, Whiskey 9 November Alpha calling CQ, CQ, CQ. note here with the uh, chameleon P loop is that do not use an antenna tuner with it. The antenna tuner that you see down here, basically we're just using that to prop the radio up today. So ignore that. If you put an antenna tuner in there, 
Uh, what you're going to find out is that you have several capacitors in series and that'll actually reduce your overall capacitance and that'll make the antenna almost impossible to tune. Um, another thing too is that, as we stated before, the pass band of the antenna is fairly narrow. Um, down in the 40 meter band, it's gonna be about 15 uh, kilohertz on either side of your tuning point. Uh, as you move up, the pass band gets a little bit wider, but not that much. So realistically, we probably only have about 50 kilohertz, maybe 60 kilohertz total bandwidth on 20 meters right now to work with, which is okay. Um, we are hoping most of the stations that we're looking for are going to be in that neck of the woods. Additionally, we're going to park and bark, so to speak, for a while as well. Um, this antenna, another thing that's great, it's got a very low takeoff angle, so it's good for long range, DX, medium range. It is not an Envis antenna. Um, the lobes go off the sides of the antenna, and it's got nulls on the front and the back. It has a little bit of a lobe that goes up, but it's very narrow, so it effectively is not a good Envis antenna. Um, so you guys that were thinking about uh, using it for emergency communications on 40 meters, if you need to go long range, great. If you're going for short range within the state, it's probably not going to be your best choice. Um, I would probably recommend one of uh, Chameleon's NFET antennas, actually, that can be strung as Envis, and that would probably work out much better. Uh, but again, the good things about this antenna is that for its limited power range, 25 watts is going to be very efficient. Additionally, if you are bound in an HOA, a homeowners association, um, or you have some restrictions where you can't put an antenna outside, this is a very good solution. Additionally, uh, Chameleon does make what's called a power compensator that allows you to use more power on the antenna, run up to about 60 watts sideband, 30 watts CW, and full duty cycle. Uh, so if you are in a HOA or you have restrictions, say you, um, you have an apartment and the only thing you got is a balcony, this is a great antenna and I'd probably spend the extra dollars, get the power compensator, run a little more power in those situations. But for portable use, I think 25 watts is fine. In fact, I think that's one of the, the best things about this one is because it does restrict you a little bit with power, it makes you conserve your battery more. So you're gonna have a longer outing. Roger, Roger, Whiskey 5, Tango, Charlie, Bravo, 59, Marathon County, Mike Alfa Romeo, uh, QSL. Tango, Charlie, Arkansas, All right, Arkansas, QSL, we got you there. That's a new state for us. Uh, appreciate it. 7 3. Uh, QRZ, Whiskey 9, North America. Whiskey 9, North America. Whiskey 9, November Alpha. An Alpha, try again. Whiskey 9, November Alpha. I'm sorry, I have a little, a little trouble reading you. CQ Wisconsin, CQ Wisconsin, CQ Wisconsin. This is Florida calling, Kilo 3 Tango Whiskey. Well, band conditions were a little bit less than stellar this week, so um, really had a difficult time trying to demonstrate the, the antenna, especially in the midst of our... Um, testing period, a giant uh, solar flare erupted, just uh, totally obliterating the 20 meter band. So hopefully from this review you can kind of get a really good idea of how the chameleon P-loop sort of operates, sets up, and uh, functions in a variety of situations. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You got to understand the P-loop is made for portable operations. So folks that are running around full power, uh, this is not an antenna for you. I'm gonna tell you that right now, but you gotta understand what the expectations are. 25 watts, um, take it out into the woods, take it out camping. It's very easy to set up. Comes in this uh, nice canvas bag, actually, this uh, messenger bag. Uh, you, yeah, you look go. at that. Yeah. Take a look at that there. Um, and it is very efficient in terms of uh, power use. Uh, you make the most of that 25 watts. You're not going to find that in just trying to throw a dipole up in the air. Uh, throwing a dipole up in the air while being portable uh, is kind of sort of haphazard. Um, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes it's more envious than anything else. Whereas if you want to work DX, this portable loop, 
you don't have to get it up off the ground more than what the tripod does. So in that essence, I really, I, I mean, out of five stars, I'd give it four, four and a half. Very quality build. Uh, one thing we have noticed, it's very touchy with tuning. Um, so if you can bring a analyzer or even an SWR meter, um, that's going to be your friend in tuning this, is that literally touching that knob on the bottom is all it takes to bring it between you know 1.5 SWR and infinity. Uh, so that's the only other really thing I'd say about that. I think the construction's great. I think uh, it is too. It's, yeah. it's very, very rugged. Uh, when we were testing it at the Wisconsin QSO party, we were having wind gusts at 30 miles an hour and mm -hmm. it, it fell over at least two or three times. And nothing ever happened. I guess if you ever had a problem and the coax was damaged, you can just replace the coax. Yeah. You can also contact Chameleon. They do make replacements. I do know Chameleon also makes a little bit of a larger loop. Uh, a little bit of a larger loop will give you a little bit more of a band pass, uh, but the yes is it's going to be a bigger antenna. So you kind of, and, and what we've noticed, especially in the high winds, it does get top heavy. Um, the only other thing I could recommend is in a situation like this, maybe a sandbag. There you something go. else to keep it tied down. Yeah, we thought it would stay up, you know, you know parking it in the snowbank. So right, like right. Um, especially, you know, we know the deals with, with homeowners yeah. associations and not being able to put up with anything. This is really that stealth antenna. You can put it out on the patio, have your fun on a Saturday afternoon, bring it back in, and the neighbors can't complain about it. Quick setup, quick teardown, perfect for mm -hmm. HOAs, restricted environments, apartments. Uh, great for, you know, if you want to go out to the park and do something, mm -hmm. an NPOTA activation, a mm -hmm. soda activation, take a camping. Yes, uh, uh, soda would be great. I think yeah. if, you, if you were up on a mountaintop or a hilltop with this thing, running the CW all day. You could run all day. You can make all the contacts you ever mm -hmm. want. All right. So, Well, thanks a lot, Joe, for um, bringing the antenna and uh, giving us a chance to test it out. Uh, for more articles and information, please check out my blog at www.gpole-antenna.com. If you love this video, give us that big thumbs up. We really enjoy it. Hit that subscribe button uh, so you can be notified when future videos are released. And um, as always, I'm Michael, kb 9 bbr And I'm Joe, kb 9 cjx 73. Have, have a great day in 73. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. All right, are you recording now? Are you sure? Yeah, now I are see you the, sure? Now okay, I see the you are sure. Yeah. There we go. <laughs>